is the Big O Show. Ride a ride. There he is. How you feeling, my man? You feeling good? Yep. I actually Googled it myself when the Iowa tornado there. That's some that's some scary looking. It's it's weird because it's tornadoes are actually like fascinating to to watch. But you know, you also know how much destruction they cause. So it's like <laughs> you don't want to be anywhere near it. No. You want to see it. But yeah, every no. time I look at that one right there, bro. That's a funky ass tornado, and you see the bottom of it. It is tearing up that 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 Iowa field. I mean, it is destroying it. Yeah, but how know. it stays complete with that whole thing up in the air—that is impressive, dude. Wow, yeah, that's a, na na nature, nature at work. Yes, 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 and don't move to Iowa. Uh, anyway, <laughs> our thoughts and prayers to everybody out there that has been in that tornado zone in the last couple of days. Now, now the folks in the Northeast are dealing with it. That's why the Marlins game was uh, was postponed to tomorrow. Uh, so let me ask you. Uh, Mort says that the Panthers are going to take Bryce Young at number one. Does that surprise you? Because I'm a Stroud guy for number one. Not that I give a shit about the Panthers, but just looking at it, if I had the number one pick, I like C.J. Stroud slightly better than than uh, than than Bryant Young. Your thoughts on that, Bryce Young? Yeah, no, I I agree with you. I, I like as good as Bryce Young was at Alabama. There's just something about him, and I don't know. Maybe it's my bias against shorter quarterbacks, smaller quarterbacks. I don't know. We know about that one. Yes, we know about that bias against shorter quarterbacks. Okay, let's not go there. But even beyond that, I actually the couple of times that I saw Stroud, CJ, he impressed me more. But going back to your original point, though, I've heard CJ Stroud for the Panthers. I've heard Bryce Young for the Panthers. I heard maybe the Anthony Richardson for the Panthers. So. Uh, at this point, we still got three weeks to go before the draft. It could change five times between now and then. I know, but Chris Mortens Mortensen doesn't just throw shit out there. That's the problem. That's the thing. And, you know, it's no, normally I mean, sure. none of us are perfect. Every reporter in the world has gotten something wrong. So let's just, you know, okay. And then a source has mis misled them or a source yeah. had bad info or whatever. Every reporter has been burned by that. So nobody's perfect, including Mortensen and all that. But Normally, Mort is pretty he's damn a very good. Very reliable guy, no question. Very reliable. So he's throwing that out there, and I'm like, and you just said the key thing. We're still, you know, three weeks away, and so that's already getting out there. That's kind of crazy, but I, I, I just wanted to ask you because I'm more of a Stroud guy. I like his accuracy. Uh, I think he's, and of course, yeah, he's got a little more size to him. Of course, that too. Yes, and a little bit more zip on zip on 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 the throws. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think if you're if you're the type if you want to swing for the for the fence, you go Anthony Richardson, who I think's got the highest ceiling of all of them. But there's also maybe a risk factor that's greater than with yeah. Rice Young or Stroud. For sure. For sure. The other guys are a much more polished. You have no idea if you'll ever get Anthony Richardson to that point. Um let's uh, let's talk about having no awareness whatsoever. Cam Newton comes out and says that he's willing to be a backup for Watson, Lamar, Malik Willis, who doesn't start, by the way. Um, uh, Fields, Tua, Hurts, Hal, Rogers, Josh Allen. Oh, and by the way, he'll mentor Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud, and Anthony Richardson, if you'd like. Uh, does, is, does Cam Newton have any sense of reality of where he stands in this world right now? No, but I mean, you expect him to come out and say, my, my last season in the NFL was dog shit. I don't think anybody's going to sign me, but hey. No, I, I, no, no. But you know what I'd expect him to say, okay. which would make a lot of sense. I'm very interested in continuing my career. I would love an opportunity to help a team out and win some that's games. Fair. No, that's fair. That's yeah. it. Yeah, that's, that's not, it. That's but, never been his MO, though. Dude, you're not anything anymore to dictate anything. Correct. And by the way, you can't play in the in at least here I can say in the Mike McDaniel system, your quarterbacking does not fit here, bro. You don't have the timing and the accuracy to play in this kind of an offense. So I don't know what the hell you're talking about. You know what I'm saying? So it, that's the other thing. You tell me you want to play behind Lamar. Okay, that makes sense. But you're not going to play behind Aaron Rodgers. You're not going to play behind certain quarterbacks because you 
you don't have the same skill set as some of those guys that are really accurate passers. That's fair. Uh, I do want to point out, though, that some of the guys he mentioned was because he had a connection with them with his seven-on-seven seven tournament, CN1, I believe it's called, and Malik Willis is one of those guys. Uh, so that's the reason he, he mentioned him. Um, first guy on the list is Sean Watson. He said that's where he first met him in a seven-on-seven seven tournament. And I think there were maybe Sam Howell he threw in there. And the only reason is yeah. because he, he's got a connection with him from a seven on seven tournament. So that's right. the reason there. Um, but the whole premise of, you, of, you know, your original point certainly is valid. That Jesus, dude, come on, bro. At this point, yeah, she really, he should not be picky in the, in the least. No, no, he should be grateful. Any offer that comes his way, he should be incredibly grateful that he's getting it. That's, that's the way that he, he should look at it. By the way, the Panthers, breaking news, have signed Eric Rowe, former Miami Dolphins safety. Very nice. Great guy. So I'm happy. Yeah, he is a great guy. He is a great dude. He is a, he is a really good pro. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you are correct about that. As a player, I think he has his limitations. Um, I think he excels with tight ends. Uh, stop over there, out there somewhere. I know you're all going to say, well, uh, he'll struggle with Kelsey and and he'll struggle with uh, he does, he does Waller, and he'll struggle with uh, Willis. Uh, yeah, they all struggle with those guys, okay? Yeah, okay? But overall, Eric Rowe does a good job with tight ends. I think he's very inconsistent when it comes to wide receivers. I really do. I, Although I, I agree, but I, I think his niche is as, as, a, as a coverage safety, which is what the Dolphins did yes. in 2019 when they switched him. And, and I would make one point to that game against Waller where Waller had the big numbers. Oh, the coverage on. was great, except that Waller kept making the catches against Rowe where he couldn't make the play on the ball. That's not the same thing as not being able to cover the guy. And Waller does that on everybody. Uh, it does and Kittle does it on everybody. And Kelsey does it on everybody. So, you know. Please don't. I hate that. It's like, okay, t you know, when you talk, uh, when you talk Tim Ruddy to somebody, what is, well, he struggled against Ted Washington. No shit. Really? <laughs> During really? the call. Did you, did you watch the Ted Washington? Did you ever see people just, hey, Ted, step aside. I'm coming through you. Mm -hmm. No, Ted Washington was a goddamn building, bro. <laughs> so it's like. Large human being. Uh, yeah, bro. Tim Ruddy was a good player, man. Not a great player. Nobody ever says he was Dwight or Jim Langer or anything like that, but he was a solid center. And yeah, I know he struggled against Ted Washington. Oh, okay. He was a B plus. I'd give him a B plus center. Yeah, bro. But he, the average fan does not do that. You know that, Alan. You've well, been around it's long enough. All, yeah, it's all, the it's average all. fan doesn't give him enough love, bro. Doesn't at all. Well, he, yeah, because he wasn't Dwight Stevenson or Bouncy after him. Right, right, right. It's no. it's not fair. By the way, do you remember Fridays, off the record Fridays with Tim Ruddy? I I I I didn't tell any of the stories he told us in those yeah. days, but like Tim Ruddy was the the biggest um, con artist out there because you would show up with your pad, someone would show up with a camera, I'd show up with a mic, and he'd give us the lamest most mm. you know cliche answers in the world but then on friday on the no pad no phone no 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 mics no camera friday tim ruddy was awesome dude he was a blast he was hilarious do you remember that no but i remember a, a television reporter whose name i will not mention questioning tim ruddy's use of the word schematic at one point and tim ruddy who who as you are very well aware was kind of smart and we're all looking. I he gave the, the guy a look, and we're all looking at the guy like, "Dude, what the hell's wrong with you?" Yeah, bro. Yeah, you better be smart if you're going to challenge Tim Ruddy, yeah. bro. Yeah, Tim Ruddy was smarter than most of us. Okay, uh, you yeah, know, it's pretty sharp. But uh, but Fridays with Tim Ruddy off the record, God, that was awesome, bro. That was awesome. What was the name of the <laughs> receiver we had? It was. Um, uh, it, it was during Chan Gailey's time and James McKnight, Rondé Gatson. No, Deidre no, uh, no, a little uh, bit more under the radar. He was only here for a year. Jeff Ogden. Uh, no, he was a trip, dude. He was hilarious on Fridays. We would gather around him also. And God, I forgot his name now. Jesus. But he was a trip too, man. But, yeah, Ruddy was – like, when we would get that Ruddy, we were like, bro, why don't you do that when we – Yeah. 
It's like, no, I'm too smart to do that kind of shit. Mark, Mark Dixon was another one who was. Who was oh, he was great. He was yeah. Well, Mark Dixon was great because he had himself fired after every game and every practice. Yes, he, did. he was the worst. I suck today. Mark, you didn't allow a sack. Oh, no, I was horrible today. I, this, that, whatever. He'd point out all kinds of shit. He, he, he made sure he kept himself down as much as possible. No, it's back, when I, back when I was the associate editor of the Dolphin Digest, I did a big profile on Mark Dixon, and that was exactly the angle I took about how he was constantly, like, criticizing himself and all that, and that was his motivation. The dude was actually a really, really good player. Really good player. Yeah. Really good player. To me, to this day, the most technically sound offensive lineman I have ever seen in my life. That mother effer locked you in like this, and you were done, bro. You were done. Whatever momentum you had, you took it left, right. He just carried your momentum and took you right out of the damn play. I had never seen anybody so, you know, technically sound like Mark Dixon. He more, was, than, more than Dwight? Yeah. Well, but Dwight, Dwight had... Dwight was another level talent. It wasn't so much also – yeah, he was technically sound, but his punch, bro, he, that was – that's not that's not normal. That no, punch, correct. He was like strong as a Knox. Yeah, that's he not normal. Also, it was technically great. So. Yeah, it's like, you know, Tim – Timbo, it, like, like Aaron Donald has all these techniques and hand stuff that not, – not only is he a great athlete, but he also has this – special talent of speed with hands and everything that's why he gets by you tim was different tim had that country uh strong he was just country strong mm -hmm. and he could get blow past you you know what i mean so it's like different types of players and that's what i mean by that yeah. uh, dwight sure was technically sound but he also had freakish ability that mark mark dixon had to be completely technically sound because he did not have the gifts of dwight stevenson Fair, and I, and I would probably put him as the second best CFL import ever in Dolphin history. What's that? I said I would put Dixon as the second best CFL import in Dolphin history. Yeah, Wake is one, and him is two. You you are you are right. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Do we have a three? Uh, Marcus Thigpen was, was good as a, as a returner for for a bit. Uh, Brendan Ian Badejo. Oh, I, that would be my third. He was an exceptional special, special teamer. teamer. He was a, he was a, an elite special teamer, okay. So I know he wasn't a linebacker. He he had the he had the um, the yeah, uh, reception the, against uh, the no no. What what I mean by is what was the 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 little the little short white guy that we had here that was a linebacker that was Izzo. He had the Izzo disease. Yes, you yes. you want him on your special teams. You don't want him out there playing linebacker. Right. You know that kind of stuff. Arian Badejo was an awesome special teamer, dude. That's a good yeah. one. That's a good one. I forgot that he came from Canada. Nice job by you. Yeah, thank you. Well, that's a good one. That's a good one. I like that one. Um, do you think the Ravens will really look for a quarterback? Because DaCosta kind of like, you know, they asked him and he said, well, you know, there are quarterbacks here all the way through the first couple of rounds. You can get a guy. That might be something that we might be looking at. Do the Ravens dare draft a quarterback? Guys, 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 it's not the right setting. It's a pre-draft press conference. Um, <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, I am kind of the opinion that at some point, because here's, here's the thing is, however you want to feel about Lamar, he's got no leverage. He's got zero leverage. I know. Um, and if he wants to go ahead and play hardball and sit out the entire 2023 season, how'd that work out for Le'Veon Bell when he tried that with the Steelers? Amen. Uh, teams always have the upper hand in situations like this. I think somehow something gets worked out, whether it's a one-year compromise, whether they finally come together on, on a longer-term deal. I wouldn't expect it to be a very long-term deal, but maybe a three-year deal or something. I don't know. My expectation is if you, if I had to guess is Lamar Jackson is going to be their quarterback in 2023. So, man, that has been a situation that I, I don't know how it ends because if you can't get an offer from anybody – uh, I don't know how he gets them to up the ante whatsoever. And and it doesn't seem like he's going to sign the tender to play on a one-year deal. That almost uh, – I almost get – I, I, I do get the feeling that this is Le'Veon Bell part two, that he's going to do something stupid like that and hold out. But again, if – you know, if he's not going to learn from what happened to Le'Veon – Le'Veon Bell's career after he did that, I mean, it, it was, was over. Great it was over. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
The other thing that could happen is he signs the tender and all of a sudden, oh, he's got back problems the entire season. Uh, is that is that all the realm of possibility? No, I, I don't suspect that's going to happen because I think the dude is a competitor ultimately. Um, and, and again, here's the thing. Deadline spur actions, as the old cliche goes, does anything really need to happen before? No. Do they, do they even need him in the offseason program? No. So, so no. I, don't, I don't know that we're, we're at the 24th hour, 23rd hour, whatever you want to say right now. Although you are having a new offensive coordinator. So things will be tweaked a little bit one way or another. I don't think you're going to run the same. I mean, you can only run a certain kind of offense with him anyway. So you really can't get too much off from what you were running anyway. Mm -hmm. But I would imagine with the new coordinator, that'll be a little bit of a maybe early on you're saying, oh, we can deal without it. But eventually you're going to need to get him in there with the new coordinator. At camp. Um yeah, again, to me, I, I don't – this is why – I mean, I know there's, like, tons of speculation all over the place, and you're going you're gonna to hear comments of, like, like what's the latest, like, the Lamar, Lamar requested a trade. Uh, is one of those – is the next move going to be, like, I'm never going to play for the Ravens or whatever, and then, you know, tempers cool down a little bit, and eventually they work out something. Um, I have a hard time seeing him going anywhere, to be honest with you. Uh, so let me ask you, uh, th th was it painful for Omar to get you to say that Tua was a top 15 quarterback? No, not at all. Okay. All right. Not top 10? As I put in my tweet, me, maybe. Um, but to me, there's a clear, like, dividing line between your tier one and then your tier two. Um, so what's he got to do this year in – Alan Poupart's eyes to be a number one. Do the, it again. In the, in the first tier. Do it again and do it at crunch time in December. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. That's fair. And January. Well, yeah. <laughs> I can't. Because that's, that's, if he does it in January, in, in December, we all say, well, yeah, he didn't. Yeah, but then in the playoffs, he choked. And then that's the next one, you know? So, yeah, uh, December and January. All right. That that's why I did the damn stretching of the season. Where before you could say Dan December and when whatever you did, like charts of like the months of the year. Now it's always December slash January. Yeah. But that's what I meant. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. All right. What do you got going on in Sports Illustrated so folks can check you out, my friend? Well, we addressed the aforementioned Cam Newton situation. I saw uh, it. Include, including why why – why it's all it's all great that he wants to play for one of wants to back up Tua, but why it won't happen then you never but you would never bring him here, right? Even you mean even if they didn't have a second quarterback right I'm now? Like, you're, you're the GM, you're the GM, you're bro. Not. They don't they, they don't have a second they well they do. They have Skyler. They didn't sign Mike White. Would you bring Cam Noon here? No. Of course. Hard no. Yeah, bro. <laughs> no, I, oh, and then I including the story if you saw like the worst start of his NFL career came the last time the Dolphins saw him. Yeah. When he played for Carolina. It was I, I, re I remembered it was bad, and then I looked at the numbers, and whoo! Bad, Everybody, bad. Everybody's time comes and goes, bro. doesn't yeah. matter who you are, and doesn't matter what walk of life it is. At one point or another, they, father time calls, bro, and father time has already called for him. His, his game, you know, ended up getting stale because you can only do that game for so long. If you can't make a living from the pocket, this league will break you in half. That's just the way it is, bro. And he could never make a living from the pocket. You cannot right. run for the rest of your life. You if can't. what gets you by is pure athletic ability, once that athletic ability wanes, you're in big trouble. Right. Um, so along with that, uh, I also did a, a look at the every the roster as it currently stands with everybody, how the Dolphins got them, their contract status, uh, which provides a good overview of what we're looking at um, in terms of who's signed for how long. Uh, and then – we also What's left in free agency offensively? I, I like that one actually. All right, that's which good. Will be, which will be followed not not uh, not too long down the road by what's left on defense. There you go. There you go. Where He's always working, bro. Always working, folks. So make sure you bookmark alldolphins.com. Which, by the way, that also makes you officially a Dolphins fan. Yes, you sir. think you're a Dolphins fan because you have season tickets or you fly to see the games or you bought a jersey or any of that. But have you bookmarked alldolphins.com? 
Oh, you have it. Oh, then you're not really a Dolphins fan. So to become an official Dolphins fan, you must bookmark alldolphins.com. That's the law. I'm sorry. It's the way it is. You tell him, Big O. I'm just saying. You know, if, if you want to break the law, well, then you know, what can I tell you? Yep. you know, it's not a good thing to break the law. Follow him on Twitter at Poopart NFL and catch his work there at Sports Illustrated and catch him twice a week here doing his thing. Have a great weekend, my friend. We'll catch up on Monday. Sounds like a plan. Thank you, sir. There you go. The great Alan Poopart, baby. Nobody sports a Montreal Expos had better than that man right there with our EJDconstruction.com Miami Dolphins and NFL Report. This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show.